Good morning, SOAR students. It is a cold day out, so I am going to do some baking today. I am making frosted banana bars today. They're kind of similar to my pumpkin bars, but not quite. So um, I've gotten everything set up and we're ready to go right away. So in my bowl, I have a half cup of butter that I've softened. I just put it in the microwave for about 20 seconds to that. I am going to add um, a lot of sugar, two cups of sugar. So that was one. There's two. As I said, it's a lot of sugar. So if you are the type of person that likes to use a hand mixer, that's fine. Get it out. Um, it'll go faster and easier. I'm just too used to doing things by hand, I guess. So I'm gonna mix this up, it's called creaming it, when you blend the butter and the sugar together to incorporate it. Um, and believe it or not, that little half cup of butter will mix with that whole two cups of sugar. I've got a couple of different um, bar recipes that do that. All right, and to this mix, I am going to add three eggs. I have my three eggs, so add those. A lot of times um, when I'm cooking with my grandkids and they wanna, they love to crack the eggs, it's just a fun thing to do. Um, I'll give them a small bowl to crack them into so I don't end up with eggshells in my recipes. Um, so I'm gonna blend up the three eggs In with that butter and sugar. Now the next step is going to be using uh, bananas and the riper the bananas are the better. So if you have bananas that have been sitting around and they're, they look like oh my gosh that's so gross I'm gonna throw those out. Don't throw them out because this recipe is perfect for them. So even darker than what I've got would be beautiful because the flavor is amazing the, um, when they get dark and ripe like that. They might be kind of mushy, but that's okay. Then they mash up faster and easier. You can mash these in a bowl ahead of time, or you can be like me and just throw them in the bowl and mash them up, mix them as you go. Um, we're going to use... It ends up being about a cup to a cup and a half of bananas. Um, so three medium-sized, normal-sized bananas. Um, if you want to measure them, great. If you want to just throw some in, that works too. That beep, beep, beep was my oven, which I've got preheating to 350 degrees because that's what we're going to bake this at. So... Mash those bananas up pretty good. Get them mixed in there. And like I said, if they appear bruised up and everything, that's okay. They work perfectly for baking. I made banana bread one time. There's a video out there of banana bread. And I think I even have a video of my pumpkin bars somewhere. So if you wanna go back to my YouTube channel, you can, might be able to find them. I've done a lot of cooking with Mrs. P videos over the last couple of years. So I'm gonna mix that all in, and then I'm gonna add to that a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay, mix that in too. There's all my liquid ingredients. It's all considered liquid. That even the white sugar is considered a liquid ingredient. So, next comes the flour. And I need, just like I needed two cups of sugar, I need two cups of flour. There's one. Now, flour you don't want to pack. You want to lightly spoon it into your cup or scoop it into your cup. 
leave it kind of aerated or fluffy. You don't, don't want to pack that. And then I'm also going to add a teaspoon of baking soda to this. That's it. Pretty simple um, ingredients. Most of the time, other than the bananas, it's all stuff that most people have in their house all the time. Flour, sugar, eggs, butter, baking soda. Those are pretty staple household ingredients. That's why I like this recipe. You know, it's one of those that I can say, hmm, what am I going to do with these bananas? And I can throw this together. It also makes, um, we're going to use a 10 by 15 baking pan, which is pretty big. Um, so it makes a nice large batch good for potlucks or um, picnics or stuff if you're going to have a bunch of people around. So I'm scraping the bottom to make sure I get everything mixed up well. Okay. There we go. Scrape that off. Now I sprayed my pan. This is the pan. It's a big one. Okay. I've sprayed it down really good, especially in the corners, because this cake will stick in the corners if you're not careful. Um, spray it, grease it. If you've got um, shortening, you can just grease it. But in it goes. That's it. And then I'm going to put it in a 350 degree oven. And it's going to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. And then we're going to cool it and frost them. So. Let's get that spread around. And it does kind of, because I do mine by hand, mine looks a little lumpy. I kind of like the chunks of bananas in it. If you use a mixer, it might be smoother, and that's fine. doesn't hurt it at all. There. Scrape it all off. Make sure I have it all. All right. In the oven it goes, 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. I'll be back. Okay, 25 minutes later, and I've taken mine out of the oven. They're done. It springs back real nice when I barely touch it. Now I've got to let this cool before I start the frosting. So just set it aside for a while and we'll be back to do some cream cheese frosting for this. So it's been a couple hours. The banana bars are nice and cool. So it's time to make the frosting. And this is just a basic cream cheese frosting. So um, in this case, I do have my mixer out because I do want it to be beat up nice and fluffy. I have a quarter cup of butter, which is half a stick um, that I've softened. And about 15, 20 seconds in the microwave is more than enough, unless you have time to just set it out and let it soften. Next thing I'm gonna do is cream cheese, and I need four ounces of cream cheese. Now, the boxes of cream cheese typically come in eight ounce packages, so I really only need half of this. Um, so I'll save the other half for hmm, something else that I might want to do. Um, so cream cheese is usually plenty soft enough, even straight out of the refrigerator. So I'm not going to worry about popping that in the microwave. I don't want to cook it, that's for sure. Because um, you want to cook it for like a cheesecake, but not for a frosting. So I'm going to start by whipping this. Uh, to get it all mixed up really good and kind of fluffy. So. Okay, only takes about a second. Uh, the next thing I'm going to add is a little bit of vanilla and... Um, Half a teaspoon is plenty. Um, if you like the flavor, add a little bit more or less. That's totally on you. Now, roughly two cups of powdered sugar is what you're going to need. You want it to be nice and fluffy 
and spreadable. You don't want it too stiff. You don't want it so that it it mushes out on the on the bars. So I'm going to start by doing um, one cup, and I put in. This is a half cup measure. I put in pretty heaping one, so it's probably a little bit more than that. Hang on. Notice that I was scraping the bowl as I was going. I want to make sure I get everything mixed in really good. Now, this isn't too bad. It's actually getting pretty close. So I must have really heaped that measuring cup. But I'm going to put in just a little bit more because it's just a bit softer than what I really want it to be. So maybe another half cup-ish. on my mixer because now I want to incorporate some air into it to aerate it and make it nice and fluffy. Look at that. It doesn't drip off my mixer. It stays right in there and then the, the peaks inside my bowl stay fairly high. That's where I want it. It's not so stiff that I can't dig through it easily with my spatula but it's thick enough that it holds its shape. So now I'm going to turn the mixer up. I'm going to fluff it and aerate it really nicely. absolutely perfect. So I hope you can see that. It comes up, folds over, still holds its shape, but is soft enough that it's not going to tear up my bars. So I'm going to slide this stuff aside and bring my pan over. Okay, I don't like the frosting on the bars to be thicker than the bars. If that's the way your family likes it, double that recipe. Use a full stick of butter, a full package of um, cream cheese, and closer to four cups of um, powdered sugar. I just like a little bit because um, this cream cheese frosting has a flavor of its own. It's not, it's not real bland. It's got a nice punch of a flavor. And I want to be able to taste that as well as the pumpkin, or the, in this case, the bananas in the bars. So, um, yeah, I don't want it real thick. And then, on my pumpkin bars, when I am done with them, I'll sprinkle some um, cinnamon sugar on top, or I've done pumpkin bars like at... Um, St. Patrick's Day, and I've sprinkled them with uh, green cookie decorating sugars. Uh, that's really pretty. So uh, I've done Valentine's Day, I've done red sugars. I think with the banana bars though, I'm gonna leave the frosting plain on top of them. I'm not gonna add the sugars. So I don't think it really needs it. So, Like I said, this makes a lot. It's a pretty big pan full of bars. So I imagine I will have to bring some to school and share them with the advisors 
and uh, some of the teachers down in the elementary wing. Because with it being just me and Mr. P here at the house, this is a bit much for just two of us. And there you have it. So simple, so easy. Now, if you don't have cream cheese and you want to have the bars without the frosting, it's really nice to just lightly dust it with powdered sugar. It just makes it look kind of pretty. If you've got a, um, a shaker, just shake some powdered sugar over it. It looks really pretty, but there you are. Cream cheese frosted banana bars. Quick and easy. If you make this recipe, sore students, let me know. Show me some pictures. I'd love to see what you're doing, okay? Talk to you later.